Hey guys, it's Dana with Engadget. I'm here with the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon. If that name sounds familiar, it's because this was one of our favorite Ultrabooks of 2013. So now, new year, new machine. We're here with the 2014 edition. And as you can expect, it brings modern specs, new processors, a sharper screen. But actually, Lenovo went so far as to even overhaul the keyboard, which is, as you might expect, a touchy area for Lenovo fans. So the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, as the name still suggests, there's a carbon fiber lid here. Build quality is still pretty excellent. Um, on the bottom though, you do now have this magnesium alloy um, mixed in. So it's not totally carbon fiber, but the build quality is still pretty great. And it's mostly the same size as ever. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner. Um, still the lightest 14 inch Ultrabook around, but that hasn't really changed. So, so far the design is pretty similar. What Lenovo did change in a big way is the keyboard. And that's kind of a risky move considering how much ThinkPad diehards love their keyboard, not to mention their signature trackpad, their track point here. So what Lenovo did in brief is it moved from a six row keyboard, as you can see, to a five row keyboard and replaced that function row with this adaptive keyboard panel here. So it has light up controls, touch sensitive controls that vary depending on the application you're using. So the machine is smart enough to actually cycle in, let's say, controls for web browsing instead of, you know, regular navigation. But you can switch yourself. So you can press this button here and you can cycle through anytime you want. And if you want, you can have it set all the time on a particular mode so that it never changes. So for instance, if you really do need those function keys, you can have your computer set up so that it always shows F1 through F12 instead of cycling through. So that's not the only change Lenovo made to the keyboard. In moving from a six row to a five row keyboard, as you can imagine, Lenovo kind of had to shuffle things around a little bit, which is not gonna be great news for people who are set in their ways. So for instance, that backspe backspace key used to sit all the way in the upper right corner. It actually used to be bigger too. So not only is the backspace key smaller, but it's been moved over to the left a little bit. So that doesn't bother me as much because I'm used to using all kinds of keyboards, but I gave it to my colleague Terrence, who's a ThinkPad fan, and he found that his finger kept reaching over the backspace key by accident. He kept accidentally hitting the delete key. So that doesn't mean it's a deal breaker per se. I think people can maybe adapt to a new typing style, but just know there's a little bit of a learning curve there. Ditto perhaps for the home and end buttons, which used to be on the right side, um, and now they're on the left. So you'll have to get used to that as well. Also, a um, little game of Where's Waldo here. If you try and find the caps lock key, you're not gonna find one. So for people who are used to pressing caps lock when they wanna type a bunch of capital letters, you're gonna have to get used to double tapping the shift key instead. Speaking of a different way of doing things, the trackpad is um, new for the X1 Carbon. We've seen this on other ThinkPad machines, just not the X1 Carbon generation. So as always, um, there are built-in left and right buttons, but now there are built-in buttons to go with the track point as well. These used to be physical keys actually, a left, a right, and a scroll zone. Now you have to press down here or here or hold down your finger here to scroll. And it's actually not that bad. I mean, as you can see, Lenovo makes it really obvious where the, these zones are. They're underlined in red. And Lenovo also did some fine tuning since it first introduced this trackpad so that there isn't much of a dead zone anymore. Um, the left and right touch zones are more clearly defined than they used to be. And that's helpful if you're getting used to a new touchpad layout. Moving on to the screen, Lenovo also made an important upgrade here. In the past, the ThinkPad X1 Carbon only went up to 1600 by 900 resolution. And as you might know, other Ultrabooks have since outpaced it in a big way. So Lenovo came back this year and introduced an optional 2560 by 1440 panel. You'll pay an extra $100 for that, but the, it, the option is there for people who want it. Otherwise, it comes standard still with a 1600 by 1900 panel for the starting price of 1250. So let's talk about performance, and while we're at it, let's talk about the ports on board here. So starting off on the left, you have Lenovo's proprietary one-link power connector, full-size HDMI port, not something you're gonna find on every single Ultrabook, mini display port, USB 3, and that's a headphone jack, of course. And then everything else is on the right side here. So you've got another USB 3 port and a little port here for gigabit ethernet. And as you can see, that is a fan. One thing you won't find on the X1 Carbon that you used to be able to is an SD card reader, which is sort of odd. It's weird that Lenovo included one the first time and then just suddenly, poof, got rid of it. 
In terms of performance, this comes with your standard array of Intel Haswell processors, Core i5, Core i7, um, different SSD options. We already talked about different screen options. Um, so one thing I'll talk about here is the performance itself is pretty much on par with other Ultrabooks. What you're going to find, though, is the battery life is worst in class. So Lenovo claims actually up to 8.6 hours, which is great in theory. But in our tests, we got less than six and a half, which is concerning considering that there are other Ultrabooks that go into the eight and a half, nine hour range. And even before we tested this, the shortest running was maybe seven and a half. And it was a much thinner machine than this. So we're not really sure why. Um, this particular machine lasts so little on a charge, but it's actually one of the biggest knocks against it. I think this would be a much more well-rounded machine if the battery life were better. Last thing, we're gonna talk a little bit about software. So as you can see, there isn't too much pre-installed, you know, Skitch Touch, Evernote Touch, AccuWeather, Kindle. One thing you will wanna pay attention to, perhaps, is Dragon Assistant. So this is a voice-controlled assistant Let's you do things like dictate emails, um, enter web searches. Who directed Transformers? So that's been our video review of the new ThinkPad X1 Carbon. As you can see, it's not a bad machine by any respect, but I recommend it much more strongly to people who already have bought into the Lenovo brand, people who already prefer Lenovo, people who already prefer ThinkPad keyboards. For everybody else, people who are not sold in the Lenovo brand per se, it's harder to say why you would buy this when there are so many other great options out there and many more well-rounded options. Ultra pixel, four megapixel camera there combined with a small half-res depth sensor which opens up a few possibilities with...